Hi. This is going to be a bit of a dry thing. I'm not going to make many jokes. I just want to kind of uh, get across what I've been noticing, what I've kind of experienced, what I've, what I've seen uh, throughout the past maybe two years, maybe year. It's really hard to say how long this has been going on, but it's definitely a thing that's happening. And what I'm speaking of is the drastic change in the climate of fandoms. Before I hop into anything, I know that the title and the topic of this video may turn a lot of people off because, once again, the climate of fandoms has made some groups, uh, some people, maybe turned off to the term, maybe regard the term as something incredibly negative, but I, I want to speak objectively about it. As many of you guys know, I'm a huge Homestuck fan. I'm a Homestuck. I have been for a very, very long time. I've been in the fandom since about 2011, and that is the key to where this whole conversation begins. 2011, the Homestuck fandom. And I'm speaking about Homestuck, but what I really mean is like a social media renaissance for fandoms in general. The term fandom has been around for a long time, especially when it comes to internet culture. In fact, it mostly pertains to internet culture. But what I'm speaking about right now is going to be about internet culture. We're not going to look beyond that. 2011 sort of began the rise of the platform Tumblr. And undisputably, Tumblr is the number one, statistically by data, is the number one fandom-centric website on the internet. When you talk about Tumblr, the first thing that, that pops into people's heads is fandoms, is the fandom culture, whether it be anime, m music, movies, comics, you could go on and on and on. It is the sort of fandom mecca. Back then, it was flourishing, okay? I remember whenever I made my Tumblr account in 2011, it was an exciting place to be, dude. It was so welcoming. It was so like, hey, my name's so-and-so, I'm new in the fandom, here's maybe a cosplay that I'm doing, or here's maybe a fanfic that I wrote, or here is maybe, you know, this piece of art that I drew, and people, notes, notes flew in, like, oh my god, this is so good, replies, replies, and on messages, like, oh my god, you're so talented, I would love to see more, followers, 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 wow, just such an incredible thing that you're doing here for this fandom, and that continued that grew and that was a consistent thing for multiple fandoms i'm talking about the homestuck fandom because that's the one i have most experience with but in reality the spn fandom uh naruto i know naruto was a big one soul leader uh welcome to hell was a really really big one welcome to hell another one that i have experience with which is a uh, definitely a nicher one but definitely has a very very dedicated little community which is nice the list goes on and on and on dude and they all had these really cool little niche communities and this kept growing and growing and, and growing and then it reached a, a point it's hard to identify that point but they reached a point wherein everything kind of started to go down down. I wouldn't say that it was, you know, like this huge fiery explosion of going down, but engagement, interpersonal engagement specifically, I would say, started to decrease. I'm talking in terms of the sheer amount of people that are engaged with other people in this fandom, you know, that are doing the things I mentioned before, Anon messages, uh, comments, replies, all of this. It started to stop. There started to be less and less of this interaction um, at a much faster rate than the fandom started to fizzle out. Because um, it's undeniable that fandoms in general, like I was mentioning earlier, have become much less of, of an engagement on Tumblr. And Tumblr has really shifted its gears in the term of its focus as a platform, okay? You go to any tag for a fandom you can think of, and its engagement is down. I can think of the Homestuck fandom specifically. The Homestuck fandom is just grasping its straws to even have a presence on the website anymore. 
Because it really used to. It used to be up there with the big dogs like Supernatural. And Sherlock. How could I How could I forget Sherlock, dude? Sherlock was a massive one. Um, and now it's just kind of stopped. And the same with Sherlock, dude. The, the level of engagement with Sherlock is down an incredible amount, too. It, it leaves me thinking, as a person who's always loved to create, I cosplay, I write fan fiction, I make music for a lot of different fandoms, it's always like left me to kind of wonder, like, what happened? And I have some ideas about this, about why this happened. And my number one thing um, the number one factor that I think is the reason why fandom sort of fizzled out and interpersonal sort of camaraderie between fans and a fandom sort of stopped. And I think that that is the Tumblr user, the, the Tumblr's user base viewpoint on fandoms. And I'm not saying whenever I talk about this that uh, a fandom in general overall is flawless because it most certainly is not. Um, there's are there are some there are some really bad sides of a fandom. It can be really really easy to consider yourself a part of those bad sides and then try and push that bad side out to the general population, the, the general user base, and they you know that's that's what they associate. You know, whenever you see somebody, you start to make associations immediately. Say somebody got broken up with on a mountain. You go back to that mountain, you're like, oh, I got broken up with that. I got broken up with at this mountain. You know, you start to kind of associate that mountain with it, and then you start to get ill feelings for it. That is a huge thing that happened with fandoms. Horrible, horrible, like, MAP shippers, or, you know, just really, really gross immoral ships in general, or just aggressively, ah, my fandom is the best. Those people kind of have an outward, very loud appearance from the fandom, and people who aren't in that fandom see that, and they go, I don't want to interact with those users if that's what they're about, you know? Like, if they're going to come in here and do this, why would I want to be with these people? And that is one of the number one things that sort of spurred the outcry against fandom. An important thing to remember, and what people easily forgot whenever this started to become a factor when dealing with fandoms, is that this is not the whole fandom. Because the people who are actually contributing good, positive things to the fandom are usually more on the silent side. They're usually more contained within the fandom and doing things on their own. That's absolutely more than fine. But not every single aspect of the fandom should be associated with this negative side, which led to another huge point of mine, to people considering fandoms uh, to be cringy. And I can make a whole separate video on why I think that the term cringe is really, really, really bad, and why considering things cringe and cringe culture in general is just really, really negative and um, adverse to creating a welcoming creative environment for people in general on the internet. Um, but like I said, th that's a separate video. Um, but people started to, con to consider the very act of being in a fandom or considering yourself a fan of something uh, cringy, which discounts immediately the greatest majority of people who are in a fandom, and that is younger kids looking for a place to belong. And I cannot begin to express to you how important that sense of belonging really is, guys. Um, like, whenever you're a child, okay, whenever you're like, especially like a 12 or 13 year old person, like, like young person, a kid, <laughs> You are looking for a place where you belong. You're looking for a community, whether that be a club in your school, a sport, or for people like me, and for a lot of people on the internet, like I mean, a lot of people, it's going to be the internet, a fandom on the internet. You're like, hey, I grew up watching Sailor Moon, and then you go online, and you're like, hey, there's a forum for other people who enjoy Sailor Moon. Wow, that's incredible. I can talk to the people. You go on there, you're like, hey, I like Sailor Moon. And people are like, no, dude, me too. What's your favorite character? You're like, oh, I like Usagi. Boom, you're in the community, right? And that's a positive influence of a fandom, which is why I'm trying to say that fandoms are important. Which, to consider a fandom intrinsically cringy 
is simply not the case. You have to look just like earlier with the negative angry fans in a fandom. You have to look on a case-by-case basis and realize that a fandom intrinsically is not angry and a fandom intrinsically is not cringy. It's the people who are doing cringy things and the people who are being outwardly angry and abrasive. That's the people you need to vilify. And trust me, as a member of a fandom who has plenty of people to vilify, I know what it's like. Because I can tell you how many conventions I go to and I make friends and people are like, oh, I thought all you Homestucks were this. Or I thought all you Homestucks were this. And it's like, no, we're just like you. We just want to enjoy what we want to enjoy together, okay? You know? And we're not all bad. We're not all buckets, haha, or whatever, you know? God, even saying that word just just brings horrible, horrible flashbacks. Which leads me, both of these things lead me, the, the cringy aspect and the negative opinion of fandoms in general leads me to an aspect of a sort of stagnation of interpersonal interaction. Like, let's talk about this seriously, okay? The level of interaction between people in a fandom has gone down so drastically, dude. Whenever I was a brand new Homestuck, whenever I was first, you know, getting into Homestuck and I was writing for it and making like little chip tunes on my, on LSDJ for it, uh... I, you know, I would go on Tumblr, especially in Facebook back then as well, even, and post to be like, hey, I made this, and it would get a lot of interest. People would come to me in Anon messages, like seven or eight Anon messages, which I know doesn't sound like a lot of messages, but uh, for Tumblr, that's a lot of messages. Like, you know, that's a decent amount of messages to get, right? Um, And... You know, people would be like, I like this, you know, maybe you could fix it like this, maybe you could do this or so and so. And I'd be like, Yeah, thank you guys. Like, you know, whenever I made a YouTube video, the greatest example I think of this is a YouTube video that I made in like 2013. And I had a garbage microphone. Uh, the recording quality was terrible. I had a terrible computer. The, there was no banter. It was garbage. And it got over 100,000 views. Do you know how frustrating it is to ha- to spend like so much time nowadays creating things for fandoms which take way longer than that you know i just kind of rendered it and put it up there and it was it was gone you know and it was out there and over a hundred thousand views for that you know and it, it hurts to create something nowadays that you spend so much time on that you invest so much quality control in and production quality in and then you get nothing out of it it just it's just frustrating and it's happening a lot in fandoms and i don't want to sound vain i don't want to sound like you know my content of the things i make is perfect because it's not you know we all have levels areas to improve okay and i'm constantly improving i don't claim to be the best uh, of anything that I do in any fandom that I'm in, but it's definitely better than better than what I was making when I was 14 years old. That I know that for a fact. And um, but the the interaction, like the quality is going up, but the interaction is going down. There is some weird thing happening there that I, I can't really explain. And I attribute it so heavily to the fact that people, because of the way that the general user base of Tumblr and other fandom websites view fandoms, is it's, oh, we probably shouldn't interact with that person. They're in a fandom. They're kind of cringy. Therefore, people are like, oh, well, I don't want to really show that I'm in this fandom. Because I'd rather be ironic and make really uh, self-deprecating deep-fried memes on Tumblr or post just general garbage and that's going to get a thousand notes. Because that, that's the way that humor has changed. And I'm not mad about it. Um, it's just kind of sad. Because general creative outlet, especially with a tightly knit group of people like a fandom or a community is a much better way to word that, is so good. Because you get direct feedback, right? You get direct feedback, genuine feedback from people who are excited about your content, who are know about your content. And... That's just not happening anymore. I only wish that we could return to the state where people just felt so genuinely able to share what they were creating and get good feedback because it cultivates such a good environment of creativity 
and puts people in such a good headspace to create more. And I genuinely believe that the salt of life and fandoms and being a good, wholesome person in general is really expressing yourself and bringing out your true creativity. And fandoms are a really good way to do that, and we're so rapidly moving away from it. I want to wrap this up because this video is going very, very, very long, much longer than I intended it to, but I just want to let you guys know um, to really take a look at the way that you perceive fandoms and sort of give a deeper look into the fandoms that you're in, the fandoms that you enjoy. If you're into a show, but you're not into a fandom, go look at that fandom. Write some fan fiction. If you draw, draw some fan art for it, you know? No art is bad art, you know? And if you don't want to do any of that, literally, I can't tell you how important it is to leave comments on art, to leave comments on fan fiction, to show people that you enjoy what they're making. Because a comment, a like, goes such a long way Dudes, I cannot tell you how much an artist will appreciate you if you give their content a like, if you give their content a favorite, if you sh tell them why you like it. A comment is the most satisfying thing to get in the entire world, dude. And I know it's going to be impossible to really reclaim the feelings of fandoms from 2011, 2012, that time period. But... I'd like to cultivate them as much as we can, you know? I know that this uh, video has been kind of like scatterbrained thoughts presented, but I think that the overall arching message of this video that we need to really engage with each other within fandoms and stop being afraid to do that because it's the salt of fandoms. It brings us together in really unspeakably wonderful ways. I hope you got something from this video. And like I said, no, it was really scatterbrained. Didn't really have a script. Just wanted to kind of present my thoughts. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you guys so much. Okay.